Yo, what is up, guy? Guy, hang on a second. Ah, I always keep forgetting to close my door. So, let's try it again. Yo, what is up, guys? This is Ninja Room here, and today we're gonna be reacting to Darling in the Franks, the never ending ride. So, uh, I got a few requests from my last video uh, that they want me to react to this video. What Trigger is. So I did a little bit of research, so it was founded like seven years ago. Yeah, that's all I know, seven years ago. So without further ado, let's get into the video of what Studio Trigger is. So three, two, one. Every so often, the anime community is graced with a roller coaster of a show, and as an audience member, once you've committed to getting on the ride, you can either sit back, accept that you're here to the end, and try to enjoy your time, or you can act like this. <laughs> Darling in the Fan XX is the latest roller coaster to set this anime community on True. Fire. This True. show had a lot of hype going into True. it, being the latest collaboration between the famed A1 Pictures, Studio Trigger, Hayao Miyazaki, Fox News, Cannabis Science Inc, Wreck-It Ralph, Sesame Street, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. For weeks, viewers have toiled over its many subtle themes, messages, and symbolism. But today, I will present the definite proof over everything the show is trying to say while ultimately assessing if this is truly the next modern mecha masterpiece. Or just another show that shit the bed after high early expectations, which, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna name any names because I'm not that kind of person. We, do, we don't shit talk here on this channel. Hmm. <coughs> we start with the yeah, title, which if you, you look do. closely is a clever nod referring to the main character's name, Darling, Hero. and the mechas that they play, oh, Super Kawaii, Mario, Mario, Robot, Waifu, Death Squad. The basic Whoa. premise is about a bunch of angsty teenagers who have to fight monsters in a post-apocalyptic world. And a lot of people have compared this to Evangelion, but after careful analysis over countless seconds, I can conclude that this has absolutely no merit at all. Look guys, not every show about giant robots fighting monsters in a post-apocalyptic world is ripping off a Vaver. I mean, one has a pilot who doesn't want to get in the robot, and the other one has one who really, really does. There you go. Nothing alike. Plus, Darling yep. in the Fran XX is a heavy, heavy sexualized show. And, you know... I got Dar Darling in the Fran. Plus, A1 Pictures and Studio Trigger... We can call it Darling in the Fran XX. While Hideaki Anno is never going to give us Ava 4.0. Now, in Evangelion, you had these monsters called angels. And on the other side, you have Klaxosaurs which are like robot dinosaurs which is totally different because they have a core that needs to be destroyed in order yep. to kill them and the important thing is it's set up so they almost have to fight a different monster every week so i don't know how evangelion can even begin to compare to that let's not forget that darling in the fran had the scene where a pilot is just freaking out in the cockpit and the idea for this scene was something that was totally innovative in the genre of mecha while evangelion also had iconic scenes that would be totally obvious if someone copied them and I didn't see any kind of resemblance at all. So you might say, well, what about these mysterious organizations that seem to be controlling everything? And that's such a superficial observation because then I would say, well, where's Ava's two pilot system that directly depends on synchronization levels, huh? Huh? And let's not forget that in Fran, only children can pilot the mechas. So I don't know how Evangelion could even begin to compare to that. And then these stupid dickheads still want to compare the two because they both have biomechanical mechs. That's messed but up. Then, Children's piloting the mech. The twist yet when it's revealed that the mechs they were piloting are actually Klaxosaurs. <laughs> That's right. They were piloting the monsters they were fighting this entire time. No. You stupid shit. So I don't know how Evangelion could even to compare to that. This is not to mention the colorful cast we are presented with. Right off the bat, we are introduced to a naked pink haired Zero Two emerging yep. like a goddess. Zero course, Two. Our main character, Darling, is immediately like. Darling, or. Oh yeah, this definitely smells like best girl. Later, <laughs> the relationship develop and even have a backstory revealed. <laughs> And as you can see here, the results are clear Adorable. as after years of funding oh. and research, we are finally getting closer to a cure for cancer. An interesting fact you may not know is that everyone's name corresponds to their code number in Japanese. For example, Zero's two name in Japanese would be Oni. Oni, 
which in Japanese folklore is yep. a kind of demon character with horns. Similarly, Code Zero I know that. I already know that. can be split into Ichi and Go. Ichi Go, one five. Which that is very creative what they did. People who legitimately thought she was best girl. There was such a big cast, it can get Ichigo. hard to remember names, so it's much easier to remember them by their unique code names. Kaka, Kaki, Cuck Lord, I give a cuck. <laughs> cuck Lord. T Cuck, my big fat cuck wedding. You cucking what, mate? The Cuckle Brother, and of course. Cuck me harder, daddy. Love triangles are a popular <laughs> trope in anime, but Darling in the Fran XX manages to take this to the next level. With such intricate character relationships, you need a far more complicated shape to keep track of it all. You start with Zero Two, who is a clone of Zero One, and is in a simple love triangle of Darling and Ichigo. However, Ichigo has other characters who are interested in her in Goro and Ikuno. Darling, on the other hand, used to share a close relationship with Mitsuru, who really ended up with Kokoro, who was loved by Futoshi, creating this big line. Meaning Meanwhile, mm -hmm. Miku and Zerome are just doing their own thing, closed off from everyone else. So, if we put this all together, you can see <laughs> that much discussion has been had over the actions of the <laughs> cast members, with criticism being thrown in every direction. But upon closer inspection, every single action makes perfect sense and has a deeper meaning behind it. This controversial kiss garnered a lot of hate for Ichigo, with critics analyzing every frame of this to come to the conclusion that I this was, was a classic literary tactic. Surprised by that. As a dick move. But looking deeply into the scene, many may have missed the subtext of what it was trying to say. See, episode 14 aired in April of 2018, exactly nine years after League of Legends started closed beta testing. Not only that, but if we add all the code numbers of the three members present, we get 87. 87. Seven. Patch 8.7 of League of Legends was released in April 2018. Oh. And that's when I understood. This kiss represents League of Legends international tournament performances and Goro I did not know that. NA. Anyone familiar wow. with Trigger Shows and the history hey, it's of kill, 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 girl, they sometimes like to put in the odd sex metaphors in their work? Now when yeah. Darling and the Fran, you have to look really carefully, <coughs> but if you do, you may be able to spot some sexual metaphors like for Anal example sex. one obvious one was when zero two offered bread dipped in honey this is reference to honey the pet name married couples can often refer to each other as hinting at consummating their relationship which in marriage obviously refers to sexual intercourse That's the only one I could find. Deep appreciation yep. also has to be given for what this has done for the genre of mecha. When we think of giant robots in the iconic genre of mecha, you may be reminded of metallic goliaths, marvels of human engineering, a cultural icon that has inspired the fields of robotics in real life. And what's so incredible about this show is that it has the balls to look at these and go, fuck that. <laughs> no, literally, fuck that. I want to fuck giant robots and oh. made lootable giant robots. In an interview with the mecha designer about where he got his inspiration for these revolutionary designs, he was noted for replying with the single line, where there's a will, there's a way to stick your dick in it. And this leads us to the latter part of <laughs> the series. That is so true. We finally get an explanation when I watched that show, history in episode 19. Maybe like three scenes. Ooh, sorry, yeah. Let me hit the fast forward button there. Let me get us back on track. <laughs> What? Wait. What? Oh, I don't know why there are aliens or why there are space battles or who's Burma or what the fuck is going on? So, you know, I, I must have accidentally skipped a whole season. Let, let me check this. It's still episode 20? What? It was at this moment that I had an epiphany. Maybe the show about angst teens piloting giant robots using the power of butt sex wasn't the revolutionary show I thought it was gonna be. What the fuck, right? Now, I don't know what the creative process behind having such a big plot turn so late in the series was, but according to some sources, it went a little something like this. Okay, it's episode 20. What do we have planned? Uh, this is when you wanted to add the aliens. Did I say that? When? Oh, bitches! Trigger's in the house now! We need girls! We need booty! We need tits! We need some motherfucking aliens! It's gonna be hard! <laughs> that doesn't sound like me. Well, at least we have another 25 episodes to flesh this out. Actually, the show is too cool. What do you mean it's only too cool? It means we only have 24 episodes.
Fuck. Ah, oh, come on. I thought, gonna, I, thought, I thought you were gonna do it. Why aliens? Why are they called Verm? Wait a minute. Verm? Ape? Vampire. How Ooh. are vampires involved? Could this be a metaphor for aliens sucking the life force out of Earth, as had been explained in the exposition? Or was Alex Jones the writer for this the entire time? They're That's... psychic vampires stealing the energy from the kids. It's a vampire conspiracy in that they are interdimensionally sucking the essence of our youth. Right. And they believe they're possessed by an off-world entity. How many other staff members were really involved? Was any information we were given accurate at all? Driven, I searched hard to see if I could find any evidence. But unfortunately, there were zero resources available to me as my anime list was still under maintenance. And then it hit me. The cockfest, ass worshipping angsty giant robot show was a front. This was a diversion orchestrated by a grand mastermind in order to pull the wool over our eyes over the truth. This was no A1 Pictures project. There was no studio trigger involvement. So, you may be wondering, who is responsible? It was Hideyaki Anno all along, you fucking idiot! Oh my god! This was Ava 4.0 the entire time! Wake up, America! Hey guys, thank you very much this month too. Nicholas Tatum, Sundown Fun, May Team Eleven. All right, okay. That was interesting. Yeah. Well, see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Hope you guys like that. And leave a comment below.